What's going on YouTube? This is Wi-Fi Merriman here today. Today I am bringing you guys some more of this team that one of our subscribers has made. Tumble Glass made this team and I wanted to test it out. Basically to be featuring another form of Farigarath as we are currently working on a Imprison Trick Room Farigarath on our channel. This Farigarath though is a full Trick Room form Farigarath and Basically, we was talking and um, just wanted to see the differences between his Farigarath and my Farigarath. And, you know, I mean, and you know what? This is a very good example of one Pokemon that has multiple um, functions, you know, basically. But, yeah, um, this team is really, really fun. We're going to showcase it again onto this channel. We uh, showcased it. Um, last Saturday, it was probably the last upload I did. If you guys want to check out that, I will also have that at the very end of the video where you guys might be able to click on that video as well. So if you guys want to see more of this team, there it is. There, you'll be able to watch it again. Anywho, let's get in today's battles. Alright, our first battle is up against Jack. Jack is rocking out with Armor Rouge. Miascarana, Golden Go, Baxcalibur, the Purifying Salt Pokemon, and Murkrow. <laughs> Man, I was so close. We're getting all of them. Garganical, I'm pretty sure that is. Anyway, that will lead me to the question of the day. I want to build teams that are ne not necessarily full on anti meta, but I want to use fun Pokemon. Like the Star Raptor that we're using on our current team, not not this team obviously, but our team that we are featuring currently right now. Um, what is some of your Pokemon's that you guys think? Well, no one's using, but this Pokemon's super super good. Let me know in the comment sections down below what Pokemon you want to see, and I might be able to pull it off, put it onto the channel. The more unique Pokemon I can get onto the channel, I noticed. Obviously, I mean it. It goes without saying, but obviously, you get I get more views. More views can come to be more subscribers, and my goal for this year, this coming up year, I guess it would be this year. I'm recording in uh, December 31st, but this will go up on Monday, which is, um, I'm pretty sure that would be the second. So, um, yeah, basically, my goal is to get a thousand subscribers this year. So, um, anything I can do to improve my odds, right? But I also want to use some fun Pokemon. So, that, that's also just me in general. Just using some of the funner Pokemon. Anyway, let's get into today's battle number one. Let's see. Armor Rouge and Ndidi. The reason I led Armor Rouge and Ndidi over for it for Rigoraf was basically because I feel like expanding force is practically for free here especially with most of his lead options and right now it's for free right now and I have no problem um terrestrializing our Ndidi into a fairy and hitting this thing with a huge uh, combination of expanding force plus dazzling gleam I do not have a problem with that whatsoever um, does Gardenacle get Y Guard? There's a potential, right? There is the potential that it does have Y Guard, and there it goes. Yep, there it is. So that kind of sucks. Because what's his back caliber want to do? Glav Rush. Darn. Yeah, that's. That's something else. Um, we can do double damage to. That, to, uh, Bax Caliber this coming up turn. I can probably hit him with the Armor Cannon. Even though it will give him an attack boost, there's a good chance that we just knock him out, right? Now, how can I ensure that we're safe? I'm going to go for follow me, basically. Go for the follow me this turn. The reason, though, yeah, that's a good play. That is a very good play. Protect the back caliber. So right now, our opponent is definitely a turn or two ahead of us because of the because of the Y guard play, basically. Let's see if we can make a comeback. The Garden Knuckle can become a problem if we don't deal with it. Sonic here is very, very interesting, right? Because it every at the end of each turn, it does damage to you. 
You know, I mean, it reminds me of Charizard's Wildfire. It doesn't do quite as much unless you are a water type, obviously, but it's still a nuisance. Basically negates your leftovers. If you're a leftover Pokemon, and if you're not a leftover Pokemon, then it's slowly whittling you down. That's not good, you know, <laughs> for a long call. Now that we showed that we're willing to go for Armor Cannon, I wonder if he's wanting to go for Wine Guard play again. I don't usually... They're not that big. I mean, they could. I think we still follow me. That's safe. Definitely could see the Y Guard again. Definitely could also see him already trying to set up... Um, Let's see, are you turning into Ice Steel type? Ooh, okay, that's rough. But we could also see him wanting to basically just try and go for an attack, knowing that we might go for our Armor Cannon. Now that Armor Cannon is probably looking fantastic, I'm just saying. Iron Head coming out into our Ndidi. We hate to see that because it's fairy, and Ndidi does go down, but there was no Y Guard. There was no Y Guard. Keep that in mind. So at least we kind of played around that just a little bit. Spinning Force will come out. Does some great damage. And then here comes Assault here. Okay. Ooh, 8 HP. Yeah, we're dead. <laughs> yep. How do we deal with this? Hmm, okay. So, um, basically it's going to be our back mines. And this is uh, already looking kind of rough, but this might show us the power of King Gambit and for Rigoraf here. So, King Gambit, A plus tier Pokemon, okay? With how I've practiced with this thing on Pokemon Showdown, plus how I've just practiced with it right now, it's an A plus tier Pokemon, and I love King Gambit. Um, and I don't hate trying to set up this trick room. I just think overall will give us the best advantage. We're going for Iron Head into the um, Garden Gardenacle. Basically to see if we can get, pick up this KO. This thing is super, super bulky, but we do get the KO. And now this is practically a free trick room. Can we bring this back? This is like we're on the King Gambit, though. That, that's a problem, I think. Not that it's a bad item. It's just the fact that it's a little bit of an issue because we're slowly losing health each turn. Armor Rouge coming out. Alright, so we do know we can hit that thing super effective. I have a feeling he might go for um, Ally Switch or he might be going for Protect. So the best play right now is to actually hit the back's caliber, right? Um, we do. I wish I could Protect it, uh, King Gambit just a little bit though. I really do. Because, I mean, he can go for Armor Cam right into our King Gambit. There's not much I can do if he goes that route. We Thunderbolt. That's all I can do. Thunderbolt. Let's see. This is super powerful, though. Not that powerful. Jeez. And there was no, um... Ooh. Doo -doo -doo -doo. That's bad. Because he didn't go for Protect. Yeah, he's going for Armor Cannon. That's really bad. To King Gambit. King Gambit goes down. Critical hit. I doubt it mattered. I really do doubt it matters. Alright, for Rigoraf, you gotta have to hold up, man. You gotta have to hold up, man. How much damage are we doing? That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. There's not much I can do. I mean, he probably might. I mean, he should, right? Protect the back caliber this turn. That's been his tendencies, right? I think we, um, I mean, either or, but that's resisted, where this isn't. I think they're roughly about the same power. Yeah, there's, that's been his tendency, is protecting the back's caliber. After he goes for the Glavlush. And we don't even pick up the KO anyway on Armor Rouge, as the Armor Cannon does come out. And picks up the KO on Farigarath. Man. Game one. That was rough. That was rough, I have to say. You know, I mean, game one, very, very rough game. It's basically how I came down to it, though. You know, like, things not 100% went our way, but some of those things were also mind games. 
you know, like, we can't necessarily 100% predict everything. Our opponent got us in a good spot. The lead that our opponent did, too, was really, really good. So, let's jump over and over to game number two. Alright, game number two, we're going to pick it up. A hell team basically is what it looks like. One thing I did forget to mention about game number one, our opponent led with wide guard. And I mean I should have predicted it, but I didn't. I even called it. I said watch him have wide guard. Anywho, that's in the past. Don't need to be reflecting on it too too much as we're getting into game number two. And you know, King Gambit looks fantastic. Now, the biggest question is, do we try and lead them? I think we do, right? I mean, I don't have no problem with that. Um, a lot of these Pokemon do have a tendency to tear it into a water type. But we'll get to that when we get to it. I really don't want to bring Amoongus right into this matchup, though. Amoongus does not look fantastic. Hmm. Honestly, I think um, we go for Rigoraf with King Gambit, Ndidi, and Armor Rouge. Let those... Indeed, the and our Maruge kind of do the back work because I mean, expanding force is such a powerful combo. And plus, Armor Rouge is probably a pretty good cleanup Pokemon against this certain team anyway. So, I think things, I think this, I think we'll find a better outcome, especially against this team that we're kind of currently going up against. Let's see though, maybe our opponent has some surprises. So, Titan and Weavile as the lead. All right, buddy, you cannot fake at me. So I'm not worried about the fake out at all. Uh, we can go straight into an Iron Head. Really, who is the fret? The fret, I believe, is this a Titan, right? Well, Weavile could have a fighting move, though. Keep that in mind. But, yeah, I think we go like this. And then we Thunderbolt the Weavile. We have to. I mean, we could go for Trick Room. We really could have went for Trick Room this time. I just really want to break a Focus Sash if I can. Terra into the Water so Titan. What did I say, guys? What did I say? I called that, didn't I? Um, that basically means that he's going to be taking our Iron Head relatively well. Night Slash does come out. Almost picks up a KO into the Ferrigarath, but Ferrigarath does hang on. Now, do they double into the Ferrigarath, fearing that we would go for the Trick Room? They did. And they got him. They got him. Okay, that's fine though. The tag on this Titan does fall, as well as the defense. We are going to be hitting super, super hard here. And it's also a life force, so very, very offensive Pokemon. Yeah, we're, we took him right down to half. That's awesome. Now, right here, we definitely need to basically help our King Gambit out, right? We could go into Armor Rouge. Which the Titan still is scary Pokemon, but we're going to go Sucker Punch and basically Armor Cannon, right? We can... I don't see no downfall with this. Sucker Punch is a Titan. That should take him out. It does. And Armor Cannon to Weavile. Weavile can't knock out um, Armor Rouge at all. And if it has a fighting move, it might be able to knock out King Gambit, but that's... I was going to say kind of rare, but you know what, there it is. Really and truthfully, I have not seen too much Weavile action in uh, Scarlet and Violet, so really and truthfully, I didn't know what to expect. But yeah, Focus Sash, definitely a very, very common item on a Weavile. Now that my defense is now fall. Uh, let's go into... Indeedy and see what we can pull off because we can definitely start throwing some expanding forces out we need to try and get rid of the Weavile though before we really full on commit to that play but we can maybe you know like maybe start trying to do that start thinking that because we can definitely go D Gleam right here I have no problem going for D Gleam I think our best Terra is the Terra Fairy D Gleam and really and truthfully, I don't hate the armor cannon. Or I don't hate a protect here. Let's actually go for protect. 
Yeah, I don't hate this at all. This way, we can save the armor rouge. At least we can guarantee that he's around for another turn. We might be able to do some huge damage into the Weavile slot. We, well, I mean, we'll take we'll take out the Weavile. Thing is, yeah, I'm Obama so was gonna protect. Okay, that's fantastic. What's Weavile want to do? Night slash into um, armor rouge. Well, we're saving ourselves from that, and then we can D gleam right. Night Slash into the Armor Rouge. Fantastic. Deagling just guarantees the KO. And it puts us into this nice little situation where our Armor Rouge isn't about to be uh, fainting, you know? And now we have huge, huge Deagling's. And we also have huge expanding force Then that they can't, they can't stop now, right? I mean, Bax Caliber does come out. But they've already... Have they terrestrialized? I'm, yeah, they did. They terrestrialized uh, water to Titan. So, yeah, we're... This is practically almost for free, ain't it? Um, I have a feeling Glaive Rush is coming out. So we are actually going to go for Follow Me into um, Armor Cannon. Into the Obama Snow, which we know Focus Sash is, uh, was on the Weavile. So this is relatively okay. This is safe. Iron Head does come out. Indeedy lives on non HP, folks. Critical hits, but Indeedy's still alive. Followed up with an Earth Power. It's getting close. I really don't like this now because they took out our Indeedy. Which I think they would have in combination anyway, but that, man, that crit kind of just made sure they sealed it up. Obama Snow does go down. But unfortunately, my defenses are dropped super, super low. Super low, and I don't like that. One little bit. There's no reason to um, stay around, though. Let's see how much this Glaive Rush does to us. And it KOs us. Man, two games in a row after featuring this where this team went 3-0. That's pretty rough. <laughs> coming, coming back and... Like, man, okay, we're going to play with this team again, and then we get two losses in a row. That's pretty rough, but that's sometimes the name of Pokemon. So I'm not going to take too much to that, you know, like, yeah, you got a crit. I don't necessarily know if that crit full-on mattered against the Ndidi. I think we played super well, though. I do think that we played our best. We might have should We could have saved our Terra for the turn that he went for Iron Head, we could have went for Follow Me. Most likely he would have went for Glaive Rush because we he, didn't, he wouldn't have known that we was Fairy Terra. We Follow Me into a Fairy Terra, then he go for Glaive Rush, and then we could pick up the Obama Snow, which then would then allow to have basically have a two versus one situation. That could be totally different because then he go Iron Head, not pick up a KO on us. He might not even crit. Then I can go for expanding force. And then it allowed me to go for two expanding forces before he could even hit me. Basically. Things could have been totally different if I just saved the Terra. And really and truthfully I shouldn't have had to have Terra other than just for some damage output, which really I don't think mattered. Anyway, we are learning how to use Terra. So don't get too rough on me. Alright. Let's get down to our third and final game. All right, Andrews. Rocking out with the Armor Rouge. Indeedy, Mayo, Torco. Uh, the Baked Dog. Miascarada and Azumaro. Okay. Um, so fire moves. Our opponent really does not want me to throw some fire moves out. But that's almost okay. Like, I'm not really planning on that too, too much. I do want to get rid of that Miascarada. But I don't think, I think having this lead, Armor Rouge and Ndidi, I think that gives us some really good solid, um, that gives us a good start. It makes it to where they really don't feel comfortable setting up Trick Room right off the bat. Even if you lead your own Armor Rouge, you really, I mean, that might be the best way for him to get Trick Room up, though, is if, if he leads Armor Rouge, if I lead this group. Um... I could go Armor Rouge, 
and King Gambit, and that would, but that that doesn't help too too much. I think in the back, King Gambit does need to come, just because it hits super hard and it's a good switching Pokemon. And I think in the back, as well. I mean, I'm 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 feeling the Amoongus. So let's go on Amoongus. Hopefully, this Azure Mural is not. Sap Sipper, basically, if they happen to bring it. Hopefully, it's not Sap Sipper. Anyway, let's see what we can do to win this game. Armor Rouge and Ndidi against our Armor Rouge and Ndidi. Their Ndidi obviously is more an offensive Ndidi. Um, they're going to want me to go for the fire move. I'm sh almost certain. I don't hate going for an expanding force plus a switch maybe into King Gambit. You don't know if 100% that I have an ally switch or not, so I don't necessarily think you would go for the fire move into the King Gambit slot. I could be wrong, and you go for it anyway, but you don't know 100% what we're wanting to do. You turn into a grass type, which is fantastic, right? That means my expanding force is going to be doing so much more damage. As you go for protect with your Ndidi, which is fantastic. Let's see. Expanding force coming out. It ain't gonna hit me as hard as it's gonna be hitting you, my friend. Thank you for terrestrializing and giving me this big neutral hit. This could definitely um Yeah, that's that's good damage. That's very, very good damage. Um I'm okay going for another expanding force. I don't see what we lose. And now we want to fret maybe the Ndidi slot as well. Like I don't, I don't think I hate going for um, the cleave attack right here into the Ndidi, just so we can try and take that off the board. I think he's in a worse spot than I am right now currently. Like he knows he has to do probably two switches to save both his Armor Rouge and his Ndidi. Well, we're we're set to do some huge damage. Hyper Voice coming out. That's not it, Chief. That is not it. And now you're going to be taking some huge damage. And that indeed should be gone. Yep, there it is. And the uh, baked pu puppy dog, you know. Uh, my wife knows his name. I just don't know his name. I guess I'm not that interested in it. <laughs> Probably what you guys are going to comment, tell me to use next, or try to use, right? Um, but yeah, okay, let's see here. Torco coming out. There's no trick room up. There is no trick room up. I don't hate expanding forcing again. And I'm going to go ahead and cleave into the Torco. I think that's the I think that's the place. Substitute coming out from okay, I mean that's good because now you probably guarantee that you stay alive. But the, at least this turn, I guess, in this in this game, you know, it's about surviving, but really and truthfully, this game's more about board positioning and you did not change the board position by you going for substitutes. You could have changed the board position if you were trying to go for a KO or try and get damage, but you really did not change your board presence at all. Instead, it got worse. Basically, you needed to be trying. You should have tried to go for. Um, uh, if this thing gets a dark move, you should have been trying to go for Crunch or something into the Armor Rouge. Torco, you know, should have been able to take my attack relatively well. So you know, I mean, that's just things maybe you look at for next time. But anyway. Expanding Force. I don't hate the Sucker Punch play, so we're going to go for that into the... Um, oh, wait, we can't. Ah, uh, Psychic Terrain. Lava Plume. Whoa, okay. 
Hits everybody on the field. That's very interesting. And it does KO to King Gambit. King Gambit made a mistake, though. I'll tell you guys that right now. Going for the Sucker Punch in Psychic Terrain. That just, that's a no-no, King Gambit. As a Snarl comes out, it, it's still going down. Did I go for Flash Fire? Did I go for Armor Cannon? I would have almost said I hit Expanding Force. <laughs> okay. This whole turn was a big misplay on my part. Big, big misplays. Is all we need is to hit this expanding force. Make sure I click the expanding force into a I want to say follow me. But that might be also a misplay. I think we just go for D Gleam and see what we can do here. Because Lava Plume will come out. It's going to hit. But the thing is, I want to go for both, right? Just to see whatever this... um Yeah, if he targets into the Armor Rouge, then at least now I can go for a solid Dazzling Gleam. And this might KO both Pokemon. And it does not. It does not. Because that Lava Plume all of a sudden is becoming a problem. We could tear it into a Fairy type, though, of our Ndidi and resist that. I'm not too worried. Uh, the Lava Plume, though, will probably take out the Amoongus. What's our Terra? Terra Water. Then we could clear smog. Either or, like which one's the bigger threat? I think it's you. And we protect this turn. I think that might be that's our wink on. I think is the Amoongus actually being Water Terra, which is first time I've ever seen a Water Terra Amoongus. I think <laughs> maybe when I was. First playing, but I didn't think that was um, necessarily. That was just someone just having random terrors, you know? But maybe that was actually strategic strategizing. Lava Plume does come out. Let's see. Can, can we pick up this KO? We gotta go after this Armor Rouge. We gotta. Yeah, fantastic. We take that very, very well. Of course, we get burned, though. Let's see. Body Press does come out. 10 HP folks but we're alive we are alive and doing decent actually we're not doing that well hold on just a second I'm pretty sure black sledge will recover before the burn tick right hopefully because if not do we have enough HP to survive a burn? Yes, okay, it does tick. Amoongus does faint though, because of the Black Sludge. The Black Sludge KO'd us, because we're not poison time no more. Oh, okay. That's not good. That's not good. Nope. Body Press comes out, that's the game. Dang it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that's a little disheartening. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, but man, that, that I think we could have had all three of these games. So that's the thing. I think I I may have been the one that misplayed those games more so than anything. Of course, a with the armor rouge, I went for exp um, armor cannon instead of going for the expanding force. That one turn, though, really changed a lot. Went for sucker punch. I'm in psycho terrain. I shouldn't have done that. And then I went for armor cannon instead of expanding force, which I thought I went for expanding force. And that was just a misclick on my part. Oh, man, dude. Hey, some videos you win all three in a row, like. 
like this one that's on the screen right now you guys go ahead and click that one and some videos like this this one that we watched today you know it's it is what it is um same team same everything so if you guys want to check out um that, that video it's on the screen right now click it anyway guys this is wi-fi mirror signing out peace